I'm driving a Lexus GX460 right now. It has mahogany wood trim, a 17-speaker sound system, and dual rear entertainment screens. Yet, despite all of the luxury amenities in here, this vehicle can probably go places and do things you never thought possible. Welcome back to another Curb. This leather-lined SUV coddles up to seven passengers with all of the amenities of an Edwardian era smoking room, opulent leather, ample comfort, and fastidious craftsmanship. About all that's missing is a fireplace and some bearskin floor mats. But in spite of all this luxury, the GX460 off-roads like a main battle tank. It's able to reach places no $66,000 vehicle should ever really be taken. Yep, this Lexus here has capability that its rivals like the Audi Q7 and BMW X5 can't even dream about. Now, unlike many crossovers these days, it actually features traditional body-on-frame construction, and it even has a live rear axle. Is this a 21st century Japanese model or Detroit iron from the 1960s? Well, based on those specs, there really isn't a difference. Dimensionally, you can think of the GX460 as, well, a reliable Range Rover LR4. Size-wise, these two vehicles compare very favorably. Their wheelbases, width, height, and overall length are all within spitting distance, and ditto for what's under their hoods. The LR4 features a 3-liter supercharged V6 that puts out 340 horsepower and 332 pound-feet of torque. Stout numbers to be certain, but in contrast, the GX is hauled around by a 4.6-liter naturally aspirated V8, and on paper at least, this thing is kind of weak, delivering just 301 ponies and 329 units of twist. Fortunately, it feels a lot livelier than those numbers would suggest. A broad torque range and responsive six-speed automatic transmission help move all 5,200 pounds of GX with reasonable authority. It's even strong enough to give you a 6,500-pound tow rating. As for fuel consumption, don't expect this rig to keep pace with a Prius. According to the EPA, it should average just 17 miles per gallon, par for the luxury course. Giving this Lexus mountain goat capability is full-time four-wheel drive. Now, unlike less dedicated systems on the market, this one is sending power to all of the wheels all of the time. And it's also got a Torsen limited slip center differential that apportions torque fore and aft. And in normal driving, it sends 40% to the front and 60 to the rear. Other dedicated off-road features include a standard kinetic dynamic suspension system which functions like a stabilizer bar disconnect. On-road, this limits body roll yet still allows for maximum articulation when the pavement ends. GX460s also feature a dedicated low range and downhill assist control, the latter of which keeps velocity in check while descending elevations. Active traction control simulates locking front and rear differentials through individual wheel braking. There's also something called crawl control, which modulates the throttle and brakes to keep you at a steady speed. You can think of it as off-road cruise control. This Lexus has adaptive variable suspension as well, electronically controlled dampers that adjust the ride quality to your preference. And the GX here is just amazingly capable off-road. It just bounds over ruts and bumps and stones with ease, laughing the entire time, making me laugh. It's really quite enjoyable. It has abundant suspension articulation, which really helps build driver confidence out on the trail. Perhaps too much, in fact, because it keeps whispering in my ear to go down ever steeper and rougher trails, which I don't really want to do because we haven't got a winch on this vehicle and I really don't feel like getting stuck. So why don't we head back to civilization, which I think, I think is, th it's this way. Yeah, it's this way. Come on. Naturally, with all of this capability, there are bound to be some trade-offs, and there certainly are with this vehicle. The GX460's on-road manners are fairly clumsy. As for the ride quality, it's busier than a whole hive of bees. Putting the adjustable suspension in comfort mode makes everything floaty and jiggly, but switching to sport, the impact harshness is too much. There really isn't an ideal middle ground here. 
The steering is too light and has a weird sort of ropey feel to it, very strange. Also, the power telescoping mechanism just doesn't come far enough back for taller drivers like me. It's annoying. Fortunately, the engine is pretty lovable. It's absolutely smooth and offers plenty of torque. The only complaint is the old school mechanical cooling fan, which makes a ton of noise when you first fire the engine up. You know, you just can't beat a really good naturally aspirated V8. The sound, feel, refinement, unmatched by high-tech V6s or turbocharged 4. Try as they might, can't do it. Mm -mm. Now, like other Lexus models, the GX460's cabin here is super quiet. It's also impeccably assembled of top shelf materials. The leather, for instance, is some of the softest I've ever felt, though this light cream color is bound to get grimy very quickly. Now, we've also got 10-way adjustable front buckets, a spacious second row bench, and tiny but power folding seats all the way in the back. As I mentioned earlier, this Lexus goes for nearly 66 grand, but fortunately, you can get a less richly appointed GX for about $52,000, which is all over the LR4 like a fancy kimono. To recap, here's what I love and loathe. The GX460's cabin is super premium and impeccably built. Its engine powerful and refined, plus the off-road capability this machine has is downright legendary. Unfortunately, it's on-road where things falter. The steering and ride quality leave much to be desired, and that mechanical fan is inappropriately raucous. I also wish the steering column offered greater telescopic travel. So the 2016 Lexus GX460 is a highly luxurious vehicle that can take you just about anywhere a rutted two-track leads, but the unfortunate truth is these things are going to spend probably 98% of their lives on pavement, which is a real shame because that's actually where they perform the worst. Hey you, yeah you, you just watched this video, it was great, it was a new curb, come on. So why don't you do us all a favor and subscribe, that way you never miss any of them. Just hit the button, could be easier. All right, we're gonna pull out behind this Dodge Nitro. That was a popular model, it was so popular. It sold so well, they stopped making it because they couldn't, I think they couldn't keep up with demand is what it was, I'm pretty sure. Good job. Happy? Yep. Okay. We're going to the Leaky Teat Creamery after this.